I'm here in Seaside, Oregon at the Executive Leadership Training Seminars, and I'm visiting with Chief Rick Schmitz from Omsville PD. And uh, Rick, first of all, how long have you been at Omsville PD, and how long have you been chief? Well, I actually started in Omsville in 1996, so I've been there for coming up 22 years. Um, and two years ago, they actually promoted me to chief. I went through patrolman to sergeant to lieutenant and then to chief. That's amazing, kind of uh, spending that whole career in one department uh, says a lot. I mean, that's an amazing career and something you should be proud of. But I, I've got a question about just how you got involved in this profession to begin with. What well, made you get there? It, it, it's, it's kind of a unique story. It's definitely, it started back when I was growing up and stuff. I grew up in a rural area, Wilhelmina, which is over by Spirit Mountain Casino, yeah. um, a small community, much like Almsville. And um, when I was 17 years of age, I was still going to high school, and I got a job at the local sur supermarket. And the job there was to bag groceries, you know, stock shelves, and deliver groceries when we needed it because you know, we did that in the small communities. And one night I was asked to go out and deliver groceries to this apartment complex. And so I drove out there and knocked on the door, and I heard a voice from inside, you know, say, you know, who's there? And I said, grocery man. And they said, come in. So I walked in carrying my box of groceries, and, and I noticed immediately there was a, a gentleman, I mean, in his mid-30s, laying in a, like a hospital bed with the blanket pulled clear up to his neck. And it was a studio apartment. I'd started through to like the kitchen area, and I just got this weird feeling and vibe, and I kind of spun around to him, and I said, well, where would you like this? And the guy said, well, what do you have? And I should have known then that there was an issue, because the guy would have known, but I walked over to the bed, and I tipped down this box, and I said, I got some bread and some eggs and some milk, and when I looked up, I was staring down the barrel of a revolver, and he had the hammer back. And I have to tell you, you know, it was the first time I ever looked down the barrel of a gun, and even though it was a 22, I could actually see the rifling in the barrel. Um, it was one of the most scared times I ever had in my life. And the guy looked at me and said, I didn't order any groceries. And immediately I was thinking, you're going to get robbed. You know, you're, you know, I mean, you know, all these things went through my mind as I started apologizing and backing toward the door, you know, hoping that, you know, thinking I might get shot. And I finally got outside, and I think I was kind of in a little bit of a shock. And one of the, the clerks had actually ran, rang up the groceries that showed up. She goes, you're at the wrong apartments. It's the one across the street. And I'm just stammering, he, he pulled a gun on me. He pulled a gun on me. She goes, yeah, he's kind of crazy. <laughs> and so I, I delivered the groceries, and I went back, and I told the owner of the store, I said, you ain't going to believe what happened. This guy pulled a gun and stuck a gun in my face. And he said, well, we, need, we need to call the police. You need to report this. And I said, ah, you know, I, I don't think I want to do that. Again, I was scared that this guy would hunt me down, you know, come after me or something else. He goes, I really think that you need to do this. So we ended up calling the police, and they went down there, and they actually arrested him for menacing. And it went all the way to go to court to trial. And so I had to show up at trial, and again, I'm, I'm terrified that, you know, this guy's going to come back and, and hunt me down and stuff when this is all said and done. And, and so we had our, our trial, and it was kind of a funny thing, because in the trial, you know, one of the things I testified, I said it was grocery man, and he'd said it, I said grocery boy. And the DA said, well, that's kind of really weird, because it would have helped your cases both if, if you'd changed it around, because if you're a man, you, you know, he would have felt more threatened, and he said you're his boy, so he shouldn't have felt threatened. And that was kind of interesting, but... After it all got said and done, they found him guilty. Well, his mother walked up to me at the end of the trial, and she was a lady that was in her late 50s, mm. early 60s, and so she was, do you have a minute? And I thought, here it comes, you know. I mean, you know, she's gonna tell me what a terrible person I am, and all this, and I said, yes. And she goes, I just wanna thank you. She said, I've been trying to get him help for so long, and he's resisted it, and she said, the fact that you were brave enough to do this has allowed me to get him the help that you need. And through that, it made me you know, start to wonder and everything else. And then they asked me if I wanted to come on and be a cadet with them, um, the police department. And so I ended up joining their cadet program. And through that, we, we actually received calls in the office because back then we didn't have 911 centers. Um, I'm dating myself. But, um, <laughs> and so we would answer the calls. And we'd actually dispatch the officers. And we could go ride with the officers. And um, when I first you know, kind of started looking at this, I was thinking, maybe a game board, because you know, growing up a rural boy, I thought, you know, that'd be a fun thing to do. But as I rode with the officers through this cadet program, um, I, I began to fall in love with it, you know, the excitement of it, the, the, the fact that you can help people, uh, uh, and you never know when you're going to touch somebody's lives and stuff of that. And so as soon as I was able, when I turned 21, I became a reserve officer, and, 
and uh, the rest is kind of history. I you know, went on and I've worked for Salem Police Department. I worked, went back and worked for Wilhelmina. I worked for Geyser and I'm with OMSO. I've been doing it for 32 years full time. Boy, that's fantastic. And you know, in an age when it's hard to maintain a career, I mean, we see a lot of officers that burn out and uh, they don't end well. It's, uh, it should be a great compliment to see you uh, with the career you have and especially how you got in it, into it to begin with, which is, uh, you know, policing's a redemptive career. It's not just law and order. It's about interacting with people and hopefully uh, intersecting with people at times of crisis and helping them to a better place. Well, and, and you know, that is the, the thing. But, you know, I've been married now for 38 years. Um, so I've defied That's the great. odds. Yeah. And it's, I you know, attribute that fact to my wife, not me, because, like I said, I went through my rough times and stuff, too. And in this job, you can often be caught up in your job and let it define you rather than you define it. And so, like I said, that's something that, you know, I'm very proud that we've been able to put it together. That's fantastic. Long. Hey, Chief, thanks for sharing your story. Thank you. I appreciate you.